So this gentleman gets his first television appearance right here on Gotham Lies. Please welcome Glenn Colin. <laughs> Calm down, calm down, <laughs> calm down, calm down. White people like, wait a minute. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Let me do my job. White people like, who the fuck is this? It's not Kevin. <laughs> Hi, y'all. What's up, man? So, my man, he didn't tell y'all, I'm born and raised in Philadelphia, man. Born and raised in Philly, man. Born and raised. Best thing, man, but it's not a good time to be alive being from Philly right now. It's a bad time to be alive, man, because everything is going wrong. The Eagles suck. Don't laugh, man. F you, all right? Chill out, all right? The Sixers suck. The Phillies suck. Meek Mill got bodied by a singing nigga, and um, Bill Cosby's out here drugging bitches. Now, Here's my thing, y'all. If you don't have nothing smart to say about the Bill Cosby situation, do me a favor and shut up, all right? Here's why I say that. R. Kelly. <laughs> R. Kelly said that Bill Cosby is a pervert and belongs in jail. <laughs> let, me, let me learn that by you one more time. <laughs> he said Bill Cosby's a pervert and belongs in jail. And I'm like, yeah, as your cellmate. Like, what you thought we forgot what the hell you did? Like, Hey, man, hey. You know what, you know what else is crazy, man? You know, um, I'm about to be 29 years old on Monday, y'all. Uh, be 29, man, 29, man, 29. You know what, the best thing about being 29 is, man, I got some really good friends, man, really good friends, but I think that everybody, you gotta step up your game with new friends, all right? You always gotta have good friends because they represent who you are, all right? El Chapo made me realize that I need better friends in my life. <laughs> think about it, his friends dug him a tunnel a mile long from jail to get the freedom. I don't got friends to take me to JFK Airport in the morning. <laughs> I don't. They be like, where you need to go? JFK, nah, we ain't going there, brother. <laughs> Another thing, man, I want everybody in here to vote come November, man. I want everybody to vote, man. You gotta vote. Keep that motherfucker out of office, and you know who I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying? And if you vote for him, this ain't the show for you, all right? Now, it's not, you know what, the things that Donald Trump is saying is not letting me know how racist he is, it's letting me know how racist America is. And I'm starting to realize everybody's racist. Everybody's racist. I'm racist, brother, you racist. Hey, man, you racist? You supposed to say, no, I'm not racist, man. <laughs> this really ain't the show, you know what I'm saying, to be racist at. I don't know if you noticed, it's a little dark on stage right now. <laughs> I think our racism comes out, though, I think our racism comes out a lot of people during different times. Like, my Uber driver's racism came out during his road rage the other day, all right? <laughs> we on 95, right? I'm not making this up. We on 95 the other day, right? And my Uber driver is white. Black guy cuts him off. When the black guy cut him off, white Uber driver says, yo, what the fuck, Tyrone? <laughs> so I just looked at him for a moment. And he was like, what, you never been cut off before? I said, yeah, but who the hell is Tyrone? <laughs> and it was funny watching him explain it. He's like, you know, because he's black. And I'm like, hey, man, ain't going to be none of that in this Uber today, because if you keep playing with me, I'm going to give your ass one star. Now. <laughs> But then he asked, he asked me an interesting question. He says, Clint, he says, you never called anybody by their ethnic name when you were driving? And I thought about it. I think we've all in here done that. Like if a white guy cut me off, if you cut me off, sir, I'd be like, yo, what the hell, Connor? <laughs> if Helen would have cut me off, I'd be like, yo, what the hell, Sue Young? <laughs> if, you, if, <laughs> if you Puerto Rican, you know your name is Juan, Hector, or Jose? And shit, if you're a black woman, I'm racist against my own black women. If a black woman cut me off, I'm like, yo, what the hell, Keisha? <laughs> it's true, man. So, <clears throat> I'm about to be 29, man. The best thing about being 29 is now I'm a real adult. And the reason why I know I'm a real adult is because my family has finally accepted me as a real adult. 
Here's how I know this, ladies and gentlemen. Yo, last month, Memorial Day cookout, I did something I never thought I'd do. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to sit at the adult table, man. That's a big deal in the black household, man. Now, I didn't know this, but sitting at the adult table, you learn some shit about your family you really didn't want to fucking know, all right? <laughs> Let me tell y'all a true story, man. I seen my cousin Jason. I ain't seen Jason in about 10 years. I would always say, hey, Jason, how you doing? I would always ask my family, "Where how's Jason doing? Where is he at? My family would always say Jason is away getting his college education. Now, I didn't know this. See, y'all laughing. Apparently, I didn't know this, but apparently getting your college education in my family really meant this brother was in jail, all right? I finally see him, I said, Jason, man, how you doing? He says, Clint, I'm good, but forget all that. I got a serious question that's been on my heart for 10 years that I've been meaning to ask you. What's up, man? He says, Clint, how do you tell your cousin that you find attractive that you want to be more than cousins? <laughs> Let me run that by y'all one more time, New York. He says, how do you tell your cousin that you find attractive that you want to be more than cousins? Now, normally, I don't pay no shit like that, no mind, but I had to ask him, man, what the hell are you talking about? And he says, Clint, I've been thinking about you for a very long time. <laughs> so I just got up and left. My mom looked at me like, Clint, where are you going? I said, I'm going back to the kids' table for this bullshit. I didn't come up here for this. <laughs> you, know what else I don't, you know what else I don't like about sitting at the adult table? That your family want to bring up old things about your past. Like, whatever I did back in 1999, leave it there, all right? Never forget, my mom comes up to the table, and my mom says, hey, Clint, remember back in the day when you got in trouble for telling girls to suck your penis? Now, there's a logical explanation on why I was a child telling girls to suck my penis, and here's what happened, all right? When I was younger, I was a follower. Anything that I saw on TV that I thought was cool, I'm doing it. When I was younger, I was a big fan of wrestling. My favorite wrestler was this guy named Shawn Michaels, all right? Around, around 1999, 2000, he was going around telling everybody, Am I right or wrong? Don't act like it was just me and him, man. Brother, you look like you don't know what I'm talking about, all right? Let's say you didn't like my shirt. Guess what I would tell you to do? And I always make the same face when I do it. So one day I decided I was gonna go to school and tell my teacher to suck it. It's the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life, yo. My teacher, <laughs> my teacher used to make me go to the board and do math problems. Now, I couldn't do no math, and I didn't want all my friends to know I couldn't do math either. So my teacher says, hey, Clint, I want you to go to the board and do number seven. I said, yo, I'm not going to the board, and I'm not doing number seven. All my friends in the peanut gallery made the situation worse. It was like, that's right, Clint. Stand up for yourself. Now, tell them what to do, Clint. Tell them what to do. <laughs> tell them what to do. And you know peer pressure, motherfucker. So I looked at my teacher dead in the side and said, hey, Mr. Johnson. So then he calls my mom, and my mom said, put that little motherfucker on the phone. <laughs> I get on the phone, my mom says, so I hear you like telling people to suck it. Well, let me explain something to you, little boy. You don't got shit to suck. I seen it, I made it, and you look like your damn daddy. Now, <laughs> my mom said, when you get home, you gonna suck on this belt. Now, by a round of applause, how many of y'all in here got your ass whooped when you was a kid, yo? <laughs> so maybe, Maybe y'all can feel me when I say this. I was so scared of my mom that day that I was trying to get hit by a car on the way home from school just so she might have mercy on my damn soul. Now, normally, normally, my mom says, normally, when I, normally my mom would just whoop my ass. My mom said, but today, I've been thinking about your punishment all day. Normally, I'd whoop your ass, but an ass whooping only lasts about an hour, maybe two hours if I really dig in that ass. But she said, punishment and embarrassment will last you a lifetime. So here's what I'm gonna do for you. You're gonna go upstairs, you're gonna get ass naked. You're gonna come back downstairs. You and I are gonna have a little photo shoot. I'm gonna take a picture of what you got to suck, and I'm gonna hang it in the cafeteria so all the little girls can see this. Now, I didn't know that this was child pornography, and my mom couldn't really do this, all right? The worst part about it was, when I went upstairs to get naked, I was trying to get hard for the picture, so. <laughs> I'm Clint Coley, y'all. Thank y'all for having me, man. Happy birthday, Kiara. I love you, y'all.